Welcome back everybody. In today's video, we're going to be unboxing and assembling this DIY 48 volt Nissan Leaf battery bank provided by BigBattery.com. In the box, we have some pretty good packing. In here is some rope. I believe these are handles a circuit board in plastic wrap, and we'll get into detail on all these pieces more later. A lot of packing material though. A little pouch with some hardware in it. Some long bolts and nuts. Some metal bracketing, and some more metal brackets. So here is everything we got out of the first box. We've got two plates. Taking note that one of them has a slot and a grommet hole as well. We have a small metal bracket. We'll get into that later. We have a plate with four slots as well. And we have four long studs. And I believe these are stainless steel. And if I check with a magnet, I can confirm they are made of stainless steel. We have a insulating piece of plastic as well as a circuit board to go with it and finally the main frame with two pieces of rope as handles holy cow there was a box in the box Does it feel like Christmas yet? Surprise, surprise, there's a box in the box. That is heavy. So we have a plate with some electronics in it. We'll show that more later. And surprise, surprise, another box. And one more box. So here what we got out of the boxes are eight generation one Nissan Leaf cells. These are considered pouch cells. They're rated at seven and a half volts nominal, 66 amp hours, and can be charged at 130 amps and discharged at 130 amps as well. They have an 8.3 volt maximum charge voltage and a five volt minimum charge voltage, which means when you put seven of these in series, you have a 58.1 pack voltage max and a 35 volt minimum pack voltage. And if we look a little closer, we have a black, white, and red terminal. I have my meter here in the corner of the screen, and if I go with my black lead to the black terminal and my red lead to the white terminal, you'll see I have 3.774 volts. And if I go from the white terminal with the black lead to the red terminal with the red lead, you'll see I have 3.783 volts. And if I go from the red terminal to the black terminal, you'll see I have 7.56 volts. And that is because these cells are comprised of four separate cells, two of them are in parallel, and those two parallel strings are in series. We have the small terminal in the middle for balancing purposes. So looking at the circuit board that is gonna connect all of these cells together, you'll notice that they stagger between negative and positive and negative and positive between the cells. This is crucial to pay attention to because you'll need to use cells that correspond with that same order. So you'll note on these cells with them configured in the same way, the positive and negative swap sides between cells. This is important to take note of when you're stacking these up so that you can match the corresponding positive and negative terminals on the connector board. So now that we have all these batteries figured out and configured correctly for when this circuit board is installed, we can actually begin assembling the structure of our pack. So I have two pieces of poly. These are about seven and a half inches wide by 14 inches long, but you can use wood for this application as well. I'm gonna grab the panel that does not have the electrical cutouts and I'm gonna place it on this poly so that it is off the table and grab two of my threaded rods and you'll take note, one side is threaded less than the other side and this is the side we're gonna to have toward the bottom. 
I'm gonna loosen up these wing nuts a little bit so they're about halfway on this section of threads. And I'm gonna go ahead and shove them through the holes in this plate like so. And then I'm gonna take my first cell, taking note the positive is on the left, and I'm gonna put it through these two holes and place it down like such. I'm then gonna take my second cell that has the positive on the opposite side and place it down on the threaded rods in the same manner and continue this process with all seven cells. So now that I have all these stacked up, I'm gonna go ahead and take my panel that has the slot and grommet hole and place that on top. I'm then gonna grab my control box that has the balancing and monitoring devices and place this on top. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is remove the four screws in this box. So now that I've removed all screws, I can actually open this up and you can see inside we have the battery management module, a Anderson connector, circuit breaker, alarm board, as well as a meter in the cover. I'm gonna take this board and move these wires out of the way. And I'm gonna push up on the stud from the bottom so that it pokes through and place a washer and then put the wing nut on to hold the battery pack together as well as the control box on the battery pack. I'm then gonna press the rod at the back of the battery up and do the same process. Put a washer and wing nut like so. I'm then gonna take my rope and pass it through the holes here on the side, like so, and back down through, and I'll get these wires out of the way. And I'm gonna tie a simple knot in the rope. And these are the handles for moving the battery around. Now the easiest thing to do to get this assembled the rest of the way is grab this rope handle that we just installed and carefully making sure this plate doesn't come loose and go flying, we're gonna roll this battery on its top. And now you can actually let this plate kind of lay down. The wire should be long enough. So now I'm gonna take my other threaded rod and go ahead and pass it through the battery pack until it comes out the other side. Now you may have to lift these cells a little bit to get the rod to go through. But when you get out the other side, it should go through the bracket, as you can see here. And we can simply place our washer and wing nut through and tighten it up. You'll then repeat that process for the rod at the rear. I'm gonna go ahead and get this cell rolled back over on the side we originally started with. First thing I'm gonna do is unplug this connector with all the balance leads. And I'm gonna grab a knife and cut in this grommet right here in X shape. And this is gonna allow us to pass our main battery cables through so that they can be connected to the battery. I'm gonna start with negative first and positive second. I then can reconnect my balance lead like so and pass that through the long slot like so. I'm now gonna go ahead and take this cover and put it back on how it originally was. But before I screw this back in, I'm gonna take this metal bracket that we had earlier and go ahead and squeeze that in between the frame of this control box and the cover, like so. And it actually lines up perfectly with the two screw holes that were already there. I'm then gonna take my number one Phillips screwdriver and put those screws back in. So here we are ready to make our electrical connections at the top and there's actually this awesome circuit board custom made specifically for connecting these leaf cells together. And this is all included in this kit that you get. So I'm gonna go ahead and place, first making sure that the balancing leads are clear of this positive cell here. And I'm then gonna place the circuit board down like so making sure all the wires can get in the way. And I'm gonna begin putting in the screws. Now these screws are specifically designed for these batteries and they have a 10 millimeter hex head. So I have about half of these screws in and as you can see the slots are starting to not line up with the batteries. All you need to do is tighten the wing nuts at the end and it will bring all these cells closer together 
and all of these screw holes should line up better. And that's also why I only barely tightened these first few screws. So as you can see, it's much easier now to get these screws in place where they go. And then I'm gonna go through the same process to get the small screws in the middle for the balancing leads. So I have my meter on the bottom right corner of the screen and I'm gonna measure the voltage on all of these cells before connecting the battery management system to make sure that they're pretty close together and there's not any dead cells that aren't gonna work very well. So if I measure the first cell, you'll see I have 7.55 volts. Second cell, 7.55 volts. Third cell, 7.55 volts. Fourth cell, 7.55 volts. The next one is 7.55 volts. Again, 7.55 volts. And finally, 7.55 volts, which is great, which means these cells are pretty much in balance and they're gonna work together in this pack in harmony. So at this point, what I can go ahead and do is take my negative lead, this is my main output, and I'm gonna connect it onto the main negative, and this has a label here in the corner that says zero. So at this point, I'm gonna loosen this back up, even though I snugged it down earlier. And I'm gonna try and route this so that it doesn't go across any of the other terminals and have a potential spot where it can have a short in the future. And I'm gonna snug that guy down. Next, I'm gonna connect on the balance leads of the battery management system. And finally, I'm gonna connect the main positive for all of these cells, as you can see here. I'm gonna take a measurement, and I have nine and nine sixteenths inches at the back, and I have nine and a half inches here at the front. And what I'm checking is, I have the frame that's gonna cover all this, and that is also nine and a half inches, so I know I don't really need to adjust these threaded rods with the wing nuts at all. But if yours was too wide or too skinny, you would definitely want to adjust those so that that case fits together well. So now that I have all the terminals tightened down exactly how they should be, I'm going to insert these plastic pegs like so. And there are six holes on this circuit board for these. So now I gotta take this plastic insulator and go ahead and snap it down on those standoffs that I just installed, like so. Now we have this ready to go. Now we need to just flip it and assemble the case structure. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll this on the bottom and pull a measurement real quick on this side and we're still nine and a half inches, but if I measure this side, we're about 10 inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten the wing nuts on this side until it is where I need it to be, which is right there, nine and a half inches. And I'll repeat the same at the bottom of this pack. So now the only thing left to do before we can put this all together is put the second handle in. So I'm just gonna thread that through the hole and through the other hole and tie another simple knot in it and tuck it back in under this flange. So I'm gonna take my two pieces of poly board and place them here on the side and go ahead and roll this cell over. And I'm using the poly board to make sure that it's supported on the actual structure instead of just sitting on these wing nuts and then poking a hole in my table. I'm then gonna take my U-shaped piece of metal and slide this over and the open side is gonna be toward the top of these cells. And then roll this battery back over on its bottom. So now that I've got this flipped back up, I can go ahead and adjust these flanges so that they are on top of the side pieces, like so. And you may have to adjust your wing nuts a little bit to make sure the width of the pack matches the width of this shroud. You're gonna take your large number three screws and begin threading them in. And you don't wanna tighten these all the way, just a little bit so that you can get everything lined up before you torque them down. And once they're all snug, you can give it a good lining up and begin tightening them down the rest of the way. So now that we've got this all built, we can plug into it with a simple Anderson connector here on the front. And now you can connect this to whatever inverter, charger, or other accessories you may need. And then you have a breaker here on the other side that you can flip on, and this powers up, and there's a nice voltage display to tell you how full the battery is. It's pretty cool that they went through all the effort of figuring out the custom PCB so you don't have a ton of balance leads running everywhere, as well as the sheet metal enclosure and BMS system that make this a really easy kit that anyone can put together. I wanna to thank Big Battery for offering this kit. They're offering my viewers 10% off for all purchases if you use the link in the description. 
If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button, and if you want to see more videos like it, be sure to subscribe, and most importantly, check out BigBattery.com with the link in the description. Other than that, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.